So hi everyone, today I'm with Sean George, the middleweight British bare knuckle boxing champion, lightweight British champion, lightweight world champion, featherweight uh, world title challenger, and prize fighter semi-finalist. Am I missing anything there, or is that that's everything in the bare knuckle, isn't it? Yeah, it's good, man. Ten wins, five losses, two draws, been in it from the start, you know, from the Bales of Eight to the fucking old school London. Yeah, Sean George is a, a pioneer. Uh, in, in the arena of bare knuckle boxing and he is leading the way um, in bare knuckle boxing, particularly in Wales. Today we're going to have a chat about uh, Sean's life and career uh, and the many ups and downs he's been through to uh, get where he is as well as his future plans and a lot more. So thank you for watching. And Sean, uh, thank you very much for you know taking the time to have a chat with me, mate. I do appreciate yeah. it. Nice one, Liam, bye. Looking forward to it. Let's go. All right, then. So, I mean, I suppose we should start at the beginning. I mean, um, how did you get into bare knuckle boxing in the first place? I mean, I know you had a bit of a martial arts background, but I mean, what sort of, where did it start for you, basically? Well, martial arts? Well, let's start with the bare knuckle, shall we? Let's start there. I mean, what, what first? Um, yeah, like I said, like I've said, like I've always been uh, involved in some sort of martial arts. I did have a bit of time out, like a, a few years. Obviously, I started a family, my two daughters, and then... I come across this bare knuckle, and it's when uh, it was B Bad, it was called at the time. Like, uh, they had a show in uh, Catering on a football field, they did in a boxing ring. And uh, you probably know him, Christian Evans, Christian Fatboy Evans. He's Welsh, like, he got a boxing background with his brothers, Reese and uh, Craig. Um, I seen him and Liam Corker on the card, like, fighting in, the, in this ring, bare knuckle. Like, and I, I just fancied that from the start. And, uh, well, within two weeks, I was matched up and on the plane to Newcastle to fight my first bare knuckles. Hey. And obviously, you had a lot of fight experience before that. I mean, I know there was some some Thai boxing in there. There were some other things. I mean, what was what was your sort of martial arts background actually like overall? Uh, well, I spent a lot of time doing Thai boxing, yeah, and I was doing that alongside MMA, like, you know, so I was pretty much a stand-up fighter. I did do the jiu-jitsu and all that. I did learn uh, the basic ground and I like, you know, but yeah, I, mean, I, I was a, a more stand-up fighter, so... And I always come in pretty great game, like, you know, so I just fancied, I think, uh, suited me more than anything else. Yeah. Okay. And I mean, obviously, you know, it's quite well known with it, Sean. I've seen uh, other interviews you've done where you've sort of said about how fighting has turned your life around um, and things like that. And it's taken you out of a, sort of a bad situation. Um, I mean, what's the score with that? I mean, tell us a little bit more about what sort of happened there, if that's all right. Let's go back to the beginning. Then, when I first got involved in the martial arts, and I sort of isolated myself and put everything into the fighting, you know, as you should do. I didn't have much of a social life. I didn't have many friends and all that. But then I just got like uh, civilized. Then I did. I passed my driving test, and then I started to go out and started doing all the things that I never got to do. Like I missed out on for so many years. So obviously, I did martial arts for so many years. Then and then. Um, I just hit the crossroads and I did like in my life, like, you know, where you stick to the fighting or enjoy my life, like. So I sort of walked away from the fighting and all that and started to go down the wrong road for a bit. I did. And uh, next thing I know, I'm, you know, I'm clubbing and all that. Then evolution, you know, how it goes, drugs and things like that, meeting boys and girls. And, you know, just one thing led to another. I lost my job and I, I had no interest in the fighting. And then, uh, Bottom line, then I ended up in prison. I did like I, I was doing a sentence, like something I did totally up the character for myself when I done it. Uh, but um, yeah, so when I came out of prison there, 2010, I had nothing to no one like, so I got to reinvent myself from that, like you know. And obviously here I am now with my own house, full time job, my two daughters, you know, and now uh, all my titles with the bare knuckle leading the way, helping build the sport, brought it from the darkness into the light, you know, mainstream. From a barn in Bangor in Bales of Eight to the O2 London, ex UFC fighters crossing over, pro boxers joining in, you know. Obviously, I, I feel like I'm part of the foundation of the, of the company, like, you know, to bring it as far as we have. So that's how I got about, like, yeah. So obviously, with the lifestyle of drugs and crime and all that, like, it's just all downhill in there. So when I decided to start again, I used Bay Knuckle and all the training and the fighting to make me who I am today, like. If you was to ask someone who I was, say, 10 years ago, you, you wouldn't get the same answer if you ask them today. You know, back then I was known as like a druggie, a thief and all that. But now I'm known as like a, a family man, honest working man, champion, like. Yeah, completely turned it around. Yeah. So, 
So let's go back. I mean, because that's, that's a good overview, that is. But let's go back a bit further again, shall we? I mean, when you first got started in martial arts, so going back years and years now, I mean, before before all this, what when you were like a kid or when you were coming up or whatever, what first um, piqued your interest in, in the martial arts then? I mean, where did that start? Coming up, it's funny it is, like, and I was quite pretty quiet, you know, I had ginger ear, I was always like bullied and all that, and like slowly I started to come out of my shell and I had a bit of trouble I did with a gang of boys, like, there was a couple of them, obviously I was outnumbered, so obviously my only option was to run, like, and then from that day on, then that's when I uh, <coughs> I started training, and I did, I stayed out of the way of everybody, just started training, tie boxing and kickboxing, and then I uh, just built a reputation for myself, and like, you know, and, and the sort of the boys who bullied me now is... Is the bum lickers now, I call them, like, you know? Yeah, yeah, I, I get what you mean. Yeah, I get where you're coming from. So that's where it started. And then what about, like, some of your some of your highlights um, of that time? I mean, I know you won titles and, and things in martial yeah. arts. Yeah, British type, uh, title I did. I was doing MMA. I had three semi-professional MMA. I won a, a little semi-professional belt I did. And then uh, I fought eight days notice then for the British Thai boxing title I did. It was in the House of Pain show in um, Cardiff, I think. Ian Freeman was the host, like, you know, he was uh, calling us in. You had Bob Spore then, he was the ref. And I went into the second. It was scheduled for five rounds. Obviously, it was clashing shins. It was, like, full A-class rules. And then I just done a low kick, like, and next thing I know, his leg is all buckled and broke. So that was probably the highlight of my fight career back then. But my next step then was to go pro in MMA, see? When I was fighting semi-pro, I was on the same card as like Brad One Punch Pickett, uh, Irish Joe Duffy. You know, I was doing the semi-pro at the same time as them. So that's that's the path that I could I could have chose. Like, mm -hmm. obviously, I went I went on the wrong road instead. So yeah, I got a few highlights in my career back then, but um, I think I got better ones from this bare knuckle now. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I mean, let's let's come back to the bare knuckle then. I mean, obviously, um, you know, you you won these titles, you know, two-time British world champion as well. We'll talk a bit more about that, but let's talk about the sport itself. I mean, there's a debate that goes on, um, you know, that a lot of people say that it's actually safer than boxing. Um, that, you know, I mean, there's, you, you've probably heard that debate, haven't you, that a lot of people yeah. say it's actually... Well, so you get people going to have opinions in there, yeah? Yeah. But yeah, do okay. you... Opinion, but any combat sport is like bad for you, and any any time getting it to the head is bad for you. Whether it's bare knuckle MMA or gloved, you've got to think like when we are sparring and all that, we still got the big gloves on. We're still knocking ourselves about, even though we're fighting bare knuckle. We're still taking the blows with the gloves on, running up to the bare knuckle fight. Yeah, but they say like it's more facial damage, lacerations, you know, cuts and bruises more than the, the brain damage. Like obviously. You can go 12 rounds in boxing and can't see what's going on inside, can you? You know, you could get knocked down and get back up, back down, back up. Where's being that go? You take one good shot, it's pretty much the end of you, or you're cut up real bad. Yeah, yeah. But then, obviously, I mean, it's a it's a purer form of fighting, isn't it? I mean, obviously, being that goes back to the roots of, you know, of, of fighting. Yeah. Um, I mean, what does that sort of sort of mean to you? Because, obviously, you, you like I say, I mean, you've gone back to, like, the purest... Yeah. Um, form of fight. I mean, what, what's your sort of mentality like around that? I mean, it's pure combat. I, well, I just stand proud. I go. I just think I'm something special, cut from different cloth. Like you know, going back to the ancient times. You know, you talk about being that girl, and people think it's a gory sport. Like you know, they would never do it. Even pro boxers are scared of it. Like you know, it's a sort of stigma about it, isn't it? That we are yeah. fighting, but whether we got the gloves on or not, as soon as our bell to go, it's fight or flight, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, I have, built, I have built a pretty good image. Like, you know, when I first started coming in from the kickboxing and all, I never used to wear no shoes. Like, I used to fight barefoot because that's all I knew. But then they brought the rule in, and like that you had to wear boots and all that. Yeah. Which does lead to an interesting thing. I mean, obviously, like you were saying earlier, the bare knuckle is, you know, it's come a long way from, like you say, in, you know, in barns and in these small venues to obviously yeah. to the O2 and headlining. I mean, where do you see the sport going from here? Do you reckon it'll get, like, as big as the UFC and stuff like that um, and that type of thing? People back in the day never thought the UFC would get the way it was today. That was being that, well, that started out with no rules, you know, no weight divisions, nothing like that. I know it's, it's, it was all bloody and gory, wasn't it? People said, that ain't going to go nowhere and look at it. Yeah. So it's 50-50, you know, it could either go or it can't. It seems to be getting bigger and bigger. You know, we've got smaller promotions underneath us. You've got the BKFC in America and all that. They seem to be doing well. 
obviously they got different rules to us. They're being up a fighting, whereas we're just pure being up a boxing. Yeah. So I, I open to go, keep going and going. Like it's a bit premature at the moment with the money and all that, but it's the reputation and the, and the respect that's priceless to me. Even when I do walk away, obviously my name will stay in it. Uh, I fight Dad Chapman next, now I do, and then I'm next to go in the BKB Hall of Fame. I got a documentary waiting to be finished, and that all I'll come out then later in the year. Okay. So yeah, so that that's one of your key motivations, then you'd say is because I, I mean, what motivations is one of the questions I was oh, going to ask. What what does keep you, what does keep you motivated? Um, you know, in such a tough sport. So obviously you've been in the sport a long time. You had a lot yeah. of tough, you had a lot of tough fights. Obviously, won yeah. these cha championships, which we'll get to in a minute now. But what keeps you like keeps you going, keeps you motivated, and, and everything all the time? It's just ever we're at now with the, with the aspect of the boys and are involved, like ex pro boxers, ex UFC fighters, and all. I feel like you've got no choice. Like you know, you can't just show up and have a fight now, man. You could back in the day, but now you can't. You've got to put a full camp in. So. When you're coming up against some of the boys that I have fought, you know, with their background and all that, I've had to put the work in. Like, that's another thing, like in the early days, I think I've inspired a lot of people. I set the bar I did. I was, I was the first one to get scheduled to fight seven rounds. So we've just, I think I've helped, you know, the level of it. All athletes now, I think we are, aren't we? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I've definitely seen the transition from, you know, just guys just having a fight but without the training to, like, high-level athletes. And I definitely think you've sort of raised the bar and, like, yeah. you know, contributed to the sport, you know, a great deal. So let's talk about some of your big wins then. I mean, let's get there because I've been, I've been dying to get there. But it's good to have an overview of the sport for people yeah. watching. Let's start with the, with the British titles then. I mean, obviously... Um, which I mean, where, where do you want to start with that? Let's talk us through the fights. Right, you know, both... for a title, and it was a world title. It was against Kev Bennett, it is. I don't know where you ever heard of him. He was an ex-pro boxer. He was. I've he boxed all, all through the army. He was an ex-Commonwealth champion. He was. He was 42. Um, his previous opponents in this bare knuckle, he tucked them away in the first and second round with body shots. So this was scheduled for five rounds now in Nottingham. Uh, yeah, Corwick or Nottingham. I'm the only one to take him to the final bell. After that fight, I had to have a brain scan. I had a fractured eye socket, concussion. My nose was busted up and her. So that was the first time that I fought for a, a title. That was a world title. I come up short with that one. And then um, I fought Scott Midgley then. I did for the middleweight British title I did. Um, he was a bit heavier than me. I always come in about 11 and a half stone. I think he was closer to 13, he was. But in the beginning, we didn't have a lot of fighters. The match all of the weight, see? Go for the British title then. Uh, British middleweight title against um, Scott Midgley. Um, like I said, he was a bit heavier than me. We didn't have uh, we didn't have enough fighters to match the weight. So I come in about 11 and a half stone. He was closer to 13. Uh, so yeah, that was my first proud moment when I won that British title. Uh, they offered me a, a world title shot then. They did after that. I was against uh, Nathan Too Slick Leeson. He was um, an ex pro boxer. He was unbeaten, like 5 0 in this being that goal. He was a current lightweight world champion at the time. I fought him in uh, Liverpool, the Echo Arena. Um, they called it the draw, they did. Yeah. Okay. And, um, and in terms of this, I mean, were any of those like your toughest fights or were they, um, I mean, what would you say have been your toughest fights in? In a very I've yeah, been a fight because I come off so worse way, like you know, with a fractured eye socket and a broken yeah. nose. I've never had to uh, have that since. Like, you know, I've had a few little cuts and bruises, mild concussion, but never as bad as that. So I'll always say that was my toughest fight. Yeah. And then, obviously, you know, winning the world title. Um, I mean, obviously, you've been in the in the sport for a long time. If you obviously if you combine yeah. the martial arts and the MMA and all these different things, but I mean, to finally get there and achieve something as amazing as that especially where you've come from with obviously the drugs and some of the other problems. Yeah. How, how yeah. did that feel to, to win? Well, I mean... I, like I said, when I fought Nathan Lisa for the world title, the first shot, I did they called it a draw. It's hard to find the motivation to come back then, isn't it? Yeah. So then they replaced the opponent then. They did because Nathan Lisa didn't make the weight. The title went bacon. And then they gave me um, Lee and Cullen then. They did the fight. He had a bit of a background, 150-odd fights, Muay Thai and kickboxing and all that. So then I fought him after coming back from the draw result with uh, Nathan Leeson. We went five rounds, me and Liam Cullen, and then they called that a draw as well, they did. Yeah. So then I go off then and find the motivation to come back again then. 
But by that time, then Vince had come into play. Then yeah, we'd had Vince with us then for a couple of months. So I started to find my feet with Vince, and I was starting to move my head a bit more instead of just standing and banging like you're doing Thai boxing. And then uh, we come back then with a rematch with Liam Cullen, and then that's when I scored that uh, worldwide no knockout. Then you know it was 40 seconds into the fight, double jab, straight right, and um, next thing I know, he's crucified to the floor like. Yeah. And that shot was obviously, you know, it's heard around the world. I mean, I remember seeing like the amount of views that yeah, that got. It's on like six or seven million it is. Yeah, yeah. And that, that's an amazing achievement. And obviously, you know, reaching that level of publicity now, I mean, obviously winning the world title, fighting at the O2, getting six, seven um, yeah. million views. Like, how do you, much do you get recognised now, like just walking oh, around? Boy. Definitely, but the people had to mail me from all around the world, like New Zealand, Australia, Scotland, Ireland, but I just, you know, I had to thrive off that, like, you know, I just wanted to keep on coming in, that's like sort of motivation for me. Took on Jimmy Sweeney then, didn't I? They wanted me to wait a month or two, but I said, bring him in now, so that's when we took on the best then. Number one, Jimmy Sweeney, like already two-weight uh, world champion he was, going for the three-weight world champion then, and now uh, he beat me fair and square. Yeah, yeah, I remember that, it was a very, very good fight though. Obviously, you got it about the result I was, but yeah. yeah. And I mean, being in all these tough fights, Sean, I mean, you know, at this level, um, what is your mentality going into a fight? Because obviously, I mean, you're a game like for to fight anyone, anywhere, anytime. Yeah, and obviously, I mean, everyone knows that. And obviously, in the bare knuckle, you know, they are very, very evenly matched fights. It's not like in the clubs where you're fighting journeymen and this, that, and the other. So, I mean, you know, going into these fights, what's, what is your sort of mindset of, um, you know, fighting at that level, if that makes sense? I tell myself, you know, this is sort of the easy part now. You know, I know you'd have come from it, cuts and bruises, adrenaline's your best friend. But um, it's, it's running up to the fight. It is another training you put in. That's probably the hardest. Also, you know, I haven't mentioned this on this interview yet, but I got a full-time job. You know, my daily regime is get up like four in the morning, go and train then five till six. And then I'll go to work, man. I will to start at seven, maybe have a seven. I got to work all day then. And I got to go back to the gym and train. So I'm always prepared. So yeah, I just say to myself, you know, this is the easy part. This is uh, this is what we've uh, done all the training for, you know, the build up of the the big pyramid. Yeah, makes sense. And yeah, that's something else I was going to sort of touch on is obviously, you know, your training times. Um, I mean, just on a personal note, now I mean, I, I check social media, I see you know, Team Outlaw, you know, up and out four a.m. and all this. I mean, what is that to fit it around work, or is that like do you do you feel better? Oh, yeah. Yeah, earlier, like, oh, no choice, but if I am training two times a day, coming up like some fucking Tyler Goodjohn and all that, I'll see I'm fucking vulnerable, and I'm in trouble, like, and I. So yeah. I got to put work in, but, and for them to see me putting the work in, they, they got no choice but, you know, to give me some sort of admiration, to know that they're in for a fight, and I'll see I'm bringing the best of them out, too. Because anybody who comes up against me, they will see they got to put a full camp in. Yeah. So I'll just go and come in, but... Uh, it's a good mindset to it. It's a good mindset to it. And obviously, um, with that in mind, I mean, you, you mentioned Dan Chapman and you mentioned, like, you know, um, that's going to be a future fight. But, I mean, what are your plans from here? I mean, how long do you see yourself, you know, being in the sport? Well, the last couple of interviews, I can only say the same now. I can only take him one fight at a time now. Like, now there's no point looking too far afield. Obviously, I just turned 37. I've been fighting now nearly 20 years. This will be my 18th being at a fight coming up. I've had all the titles and I know it's, it's hard to get motivated you now for the titles. I'm just in this other the fame now, really, and a bit of money. But um, yeah, I definitely got to fight Dan Chapman. That's already scheduled. All the tickets to stay valid now from the April show to the August show. So that's a fight that's definitely going ahead. I started, uh, I fought January, James Kennelly after training all through Christmas. And then I had two weeks out and I jumped straight back in the camp. Then. But, so, yeah, I trained all through Christmas. I did for the January show, James Kennelly. And then I had two weeks out and I jumped straight back in the camp then to fight Dan Chapman. I started training for that camp at 81 kilos. I got all the way down to 73 kilos, heading for 69. I was a scheduled weight. And then uh, they pulled the plug in like a week out. I was a week out from training and down and getting ready to rest. And then all this, uh, this virus situation come about then which is a bit of a nightmare. Put everything on hold. Obviously, all the gyms are out of closed. Everybody got to stay in. The kids are off school. I'm stuck with them 24 hours a day. So I haven't really done any training, but to be honest, but coming out of two camps back to back, I think I'm entitled to just sit on my ass a bit like. Yeah. 
hundred percent. And I mean, obviously, um, you're taking it one fight at a time and stuff like that. But do you think in the future you can see yourself like training at all or anything like that? And the reason I ask that, Sean, is because obviously being like a pioneer of the sport and being in as many fights as you have and all that type of thing, you've got like a unique um, experience with it. So do, do you think you can see yourself training or, or anything like that in the future, of training young fighters? Right. Well, it's an option, isn't it? But um, I don't think anybody can stick to my regime back, you know? If I say be there at four o'clock, but I want to make up as free weight then, but, you know? Yeah. We've got one more round as well, but we do 12 rounds. You've got to do 13, but push-ups and now always one for good measure. Flipping tyres and now, but the killer, man. You see them one day, you won't see them again. But that's just my mentality, that is, you know? It's all or nothing, but you can't just fluff about, but it's either you want it or you don't. Yeah. Got to give it your all, but everything is so much involved, but sacrifice and all that, but you know, with the eating and family time and all that, it's a fucking nightmare sometimes. Yeah, and the other yeah. thing is, is obviously, um, with that in mind, like I know you, you know, you, by the looks of it, you've got a few fights left in you, you know, I mean, that's just my view, but I mean, with all, everything you've accomplished so far, um, just looking at that, how do you like want to be remembered by people, and how do you think you will be remembered? by people, you know, in, in years to come type of thing. I think I've already got that label as well already, but you know, I'm, I'm already yeah. honest, but that's, that was my goal. Like, I'll see a fight Dan Chapman now, no matter the result. I don't care about win, lose or draw. I'm still going to get the respect. People are still going to remember me. Like I said, after that, then I go into the BKB Hall of Fame. Only one boy I've gone in it so far, Ricky now. That's so I'll be next to go into that. And it's just all good things to look back on. I don't, you know, we'll just see who they are for me and, you know, what's on, what's on the line, like a fight or whatever, but I can only take them one at a time. So my focus at the moment is just on Dan Chapman. We'll see what happens yeah. after that then. Fair enough. Okay. Always be some sort of ambassador. I'll always be involved in being that when I'm judging, you know, I'll always take part in it. Training people, as you said earlier, I'll always keep fit and healthy, I will. Mm-hmm. And um, one of the last questions I got, Sean, is, I mean, if you had to give, like, advice, um, you know, to young fighters, whether it's coming into bare knuckle, gloved, martial arts, anything at all, I mean, you know, what type of, like, what would you say to them, like, young fighters, you know, just coming into the sport now and stuff like well, that? To be honest, but I say it all the time, but I would advise anybody to get into any sort of martial arts, but any sort of discipline, you know, like I said, for the discipline alone and the routine and self-respect and the respect of others and, you meet good people instead of going down the wrong roads and us. It's, it's a good lifestyle. Like you don't have to compete. You can just do it to stay fit and just enjoy it. So yeah, I would advise anybody to give it a go. You know, the first one is going to be the artist walking into some gym with people who don't know, but a couple of months down the line and all your best friend and it's great. I met some of the greatest people in this bare knuckle. You know, people look down on this bare knuckle as a gory sport and I used it to change my life. Can't be that bad. And, you know, I mean, before we, you know, before we sort of wrap things up and everything like that, is there anything um, specifically that, you know, you'd like to say to, like, to the fans or the people watching this or just, just anything at all? Or, or are, you, are you all good, like? Well, you've supported me up to now, all the fans, the fighters, you know, I've got a few sponsors who stuck with me from the first fight, you know, the well, fight number 18 coming up now. Obviously, the company, you've got Jim and Joe, they set the stage for us to play our part. We've all, you know, we've all played our roles in building a sport. And, yeah, just everybody who supported me, but the messages and the likes on Facebook and Instagram and all that, it's just great, like, you know, the, all the shares and just thank you, everybody, man. Good stuff. Well, I mean, that, Sean, that's everything, mate. I mean, you know... Um... I don't think there's anything else to cover. We've had a really good insight into your career, you know, highs and lows, how you got there. Um, I can talk about it all day, man. There's loads of stuff I could think about to go on and on and on. But, you know, you know you've got the American, that Eric Olsen story, like, I don't know whether you know him. Yeah, yeah. I got matched at the fight in my day in New Year's. Oh, it was um, bomb fight night, it was. So I got matched at the fight in. We was friends going into that fight we was. And then we become fucking worst enemies, but we wanted to kill each other. They set the rematch, but all the Welsh had to be caged off from him and how they did. And then I beat him again, and it was still up row after that. It's just loads of stories, but it's been highs and lows, but it's been like, oh, and I'm still fucking going. Yeah, still got, yeah, you've still got a few fights left in you, mate. But honestly, I mean, it's amazing what you've accomplished. And obviously, you know, like you say, raising a sport to, you know, such a high level that it's at now. 
And I, I reckon, it, personally, I reckon they just keep on going, do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. We're yeah. in the end of the old tour at the moment, like we're, we're selling that out, like, you know, three and a half, four thousand, obviously we're going to outgrow that soon. Uh, they talk about Wembley next, like, I don't know how many that are old, I think it's the 12,000 section, so that's going to be an option. It might not be this year now, maybe not next year, but it's going to come, like, it's going to keep growing and growing. It's got the momentum now, like, you know, it's all above board and legal, there's a lot of money being pumped into it and out. A lot of top end fighters, a lot of people involved, you know, big Joe Egan, Frank Bruno, celebrities left, right and centre, you know, they all want to get involved. So yeah, I can just see it going up, going, keep going. Yeah. Anyway, mate, I think we've covered a lot. So just for, you know, like I say, just for the end of this now, I, I like I say, I do appreciate you taking the time to um, to have a chat with me. Yes. Any time, but I'm sorry, I was a couple of days late, but you don't understand with them kids, but they like me. Yeah, honestly, what don't worry about that. Don't worry about it. I mean, family is what matters, isn't it, at the end of the day? I mean, you've got to put that first. Yeah, like. one of the I do this fight, you know, I put a roof over their head and all that. I just bought my own house and that. I wanted my goals I wanted to do, and I, I wouldn't have been able to do that without the fight in the day that well. And just to be some sort of um, role model from, like, you know, some sort of hero, because they really see me as a hero, like. Yeah. Yeah, like, well, I definitely think you, you show that, Sean, to not just to your family, but I think you show that to like your community as well, to be honest. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. Certainly. Yeah. Respect. Now, I like people to respect me the same now, you know. That's it. But yeah, and you show people what's possible as well, mate. That's the other thing. Because, you know, I mean, if um, you know, you can come up with this, with, you know, with all the drugs and this and that, and, yeah, then, and even even just something like being quiet and being bullied. I mean, there's so many people going through that. Yeah, that, if you, if you can, yeah. they can do it, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. I said I'm a walking, you know, true fucking inspiration to people. Like, and I've been at the fucking depths of Albert Low, so the low suicidal on drugs and I'm, now I'm on top of the world, like, and how happy as can be. It's the same sort of story as Tyson Fury, like, you know, depression, drugs and things like that. It's like when he was saying his story the other night, I could, I could relate to that. Like, I was familiar with that. Yeah. And yeah. It, it's always a bright day after a dark one, but... That's it. Yeah, that's it. Things always get better, don't they? I know. No oh, worse keep... end, but, you know, we pro ourselves in the shit and only takes us to get us out. We're going to have all the help in the world. It just takes us in the end. You want something, but go for it, you know? Chase your dreams. Yeah. Talk on the Tyler Good job fight. You know, he had a good background, ex English champion and I, ex pro boxer. Everybody thought he was gonna have his way with me. That's probably my best performance, that is. I don't know whether you've seen it. I have, yeah. It's a cracking fight. I don't know, I went seven rounds. Obviously I knocked him down in the first first and pretty much shocked him. He knocked me down the end of the first and it was just fucking a bit of everything. Boxing, brawling, fighting, just pure guts and admiration to win, like, you know, the will to win. So that's, that's another proud moment for me to take Tyler Goodjohn and seven him rounds like. And it was a split decision in the end, no matter what anybody says or him like, you know, it was the final call was a split decision and it just edged towards him, it did. I think he sold a bit more tickets to me and he's up and come here, shouldn't he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I did want a rematch straight away, but it never happened. We won't go into that, like maybe that'll happen in the future. We still put on that, but um, and the fact already, but to be honest, you've only had three being up on the and now mine are fucking all fine. Uh, I love it, mate. I love it. Uh, true warrior, mate. That's you know, that's yeah, that's all I can say about that game for anyone, like, yep, awesome. All right, mate. But like I say, thank you again. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Bye. All right, it's better. Take it easy. Thank you very much for watching. Um, please subscribe to the Simply Inspired YouTube channel and there'll be more videos coming soon.